Here's a video about how Thevenin equivalents can simplify your circuit analysis. Say we have one component we're changing in the whole network of components, which has independent sources, dependent sources, and whatnot. And all we really, our end goal is to change this load and observe the current through it. And we don't really care about anything else in this whole big circuit. So it'd be a real pain if we change this load and had to recalculate all these nodes in the circuit just to get what we want. So the idea behind Thevenin is we can treat any linear circuit with an equivalent Thevenin voltage and Thevenin impedance. And if you wanted a current source instead, you can do a source transformation. I have another video on that. Um, and there's really only a few ways to treat uh, to solve these Thevenin circuits. So first of all, we want to solve for the Thevenin voltage. And the only way to do that is to just take away the load. So if we were to look at this circuit here, it would take this load out of the circuit and find the voltage between these two nodes here. So between this node and ground, this is ground. And once we do that, we have our open circuit voltage, which is our Thevenin voltage. Uh, so that was easy. What about Z Thevenin, or the Thevenin impedance? Well, there's three ways. The first way is to find the short circuit current. And then we have two points on this IV curve, and we know the slope will give us the impedance. I have another video on that as well to prove it, but that's, that's one easy way. Of course, we could also plug in different values for resistance and find different points on this line and you know find the slope from there. But the two easiest points are the intercepts because we can just divide the open circuit voltage by the short circuit current. Uh, another way is we could just put a test source in this, so we're using a voltage source, and find the voltage of the test source over the current that gets drawn from it, um, which is really doing the same thing as this. Here we can see we're finding the voltage across our network and dividing by the current through it. Notice here we have our network defined this way, so we have some voltage across it and a current entering, which means the impedance is just defined as voltage over current. And yeah, that's, that's, that's basically finding the same thing as the, the first way, but uh, this is more versatile, and we'll have an example on that in another video. And the third way to find the Thevenin impedance is if there are no dependent sources. Notice, uh, remember my last video about dependent sources and how networks see them. Um, we, we said they kind of act as resistors, so that we can't just ignore them when talking about how other components see them. But for independent sources, we can short out the voltage sources and open all the current sources. And the reason we can short out voltage sources is any amount of current can enter this voltage source, which means it does not have a resistance associated with it. Again, my previous video kind of goes into more detail, but you can think of it as just any current can enter this and it'll have no resist. This will provide no resistance against that current entering. The current source, however, only provides the current that's specified by the source. So if another excitation current tries to enter this source, it can't. So it has infinite impedance against other currents entering that node. And so if we use this method of finding the Thevenin uh, impedance, here we'll short out the source, we'll open up this current source, and we're looking at the impedance seen by these load terminals. So, okay, now we have this, RR and 2R. Now again, seen by this, we have these two Rs combined into two R, and then that's in parallel as far as the, this load is concerned with another two R. And if we simplify that to R, that is the Thevenin impedance seen by this source. So if there's no d dependent sources, you can open the voltage sources, or excuse me, short the voltage sources, open the current sources, and just use resistor combinations in parallel and series to solve for your Thevenin impedance. 
In summary, here's a table of how to find V Thevenin and Z Thevenin, and in case you want a current source, um, it's really a Norton transformation, but for uh, simplicity, I'm just going to call this I Thevenin as well. So pause this if you need some reference.